In a previous video, GPM instructor Alan Dellinger demonstrated how to set the pump compensator and the system relief valve. But what do we do when there are two compensator adjustments on the pump? That second adjustment is called the load sensing valve, or some people call it the flow compensator. Typically, it's the adjustment farther away from the pump, but it will always be the smaller of the two valves. This is because the valve houses a smaller spool and a smaller spring than those of the pressure compensator. Its purpose is to enable the pump to idle at a lower standby pressure than that of the compensator setting. Or, it can also be used to remotely control the effective pressure setting of the pump. If it does not have a line connected to it, the load sensing feature of the pump is not being used in your application, and there will be no need to adjust it because, since it is plugged off, it will not shift during operation. All pressure adjustments should then be made to the pressure compensator only. If there is a line connected, then it is serving some purpose in the system and its setting can affect the operation. In the example shown, the load sensing valve is being used to lower the standby pressure of the pump. Our load sensing valve is set to 200 PSI and the compensator is set to 1950 PSI. There is a loading valve in the system that will determine which pressure will be used. Obviously, less energy is required to idle at 200 PSI than at 1950, and of course, less heat is generated. When the loading valve is de-energized, the pilot line is drained to tank. This causes the pump to idle at the setting of the load sensing valve, 200 PSI. When we are ready to move the load, the loading valve is energized. This directs a pilot signal from downstream of the flow control to augment the setting of the load sensing valve. Since the system is deadheaded by the directional valve, the pressure will build to the compensator setting, 1950 PSI. When the directional valve is shifted to extend the cylinder, pressure will drop downstream of the flow control to what is required to move the load, 700 PSI. The 700 PSI load pressure augments the 200 PSI setting of the load sensing valve, causing the pump to stroke only enough to generate 900 PSI. While the load is moving, the setting of the load sensing valve will determine the pressure drop across the flow control, 200 PSI. Without the load sensing valve, the pump would have stroked to generate 1950 PSI upstream of the flow control, which would have developed a 1,250 PSI pressure drop. Thus, the load sensing valve also reduces the heat generated by the flow control and maintains a constant cylinder speed regardless of the load pressure. If we increase the weight of the load, such that it requires 900 PSI to move, the load sensing valve strokes the pump enough to generate 1,100 PSI, maintaining the 200 PSI pressure drop and thus keeping a constant load speed. When the cylinder is stopped, all flow is deadheaded, and so long as the loading valve remains energized, pressure builds to the compensator setting of 1950 PSI. When the directional valve is shifted to retract the cylinder, the smaller surface area of the piston requires more pressure to retract the load. Pressure then builds to 1100 PSI, and the pump is stroked to deliver 1300 PSI. Notice also that the cylinder retracts faster than it extends because it doesn't take as much fluid to retract as it does to extend due to the rod displacing volume. Once the cylinder is retracted, the loading valve is de-energized. This drops the standby pressure back to the 200 PSI setting of the load sensing valve. To set the pressures in the system, we will leave the directional valve that operates the cylinder de-energized to deadhead the system. There is now nowhere for fluid to go except across the relief valve. Turn the adjustment of the relief valve down counterclockwise to a very low pressure. Depending upon the relief valve, the adjustment may come all the way out, so turn it counterclockwise only until you no longer feel spring tension. Turn the pressure compensator adjustment clockwise to a very high pressure so that you know that it is set higher than you will be setting the relief valve. When the pump is turned on, Energize the loading valve so that the pump will deliver maximum flow. You will now be delivering flow across the relief valve at a very low pressure. Turn the relief valve adjustment clockwise to the required setting. In our example, that will be 2200 PSI. When the relief valve is set, 
Leave the loading valve energized while turning the pressure compensator adjustment counterclockwise. In our example, to 1950 PSI. Once the pressure compensator is adjusted, de-energize the loading valve so that the load sensing valve can be adjusted. Check the pump documentation to find the correct pressure. Usually, the load sensing valve is factory preset to about 2 or 300 PSI, and no adjustment should be required. In practice, however, we could either suffer the effects of the plant knob turner, or the spring could lose tension over time. In our example, we will be setting the load sensing valve to 200 PSI. Once the setting is made, the system can then be placed back into service. This is a common design setup, but there are many variations. Regardless of your design, the two things to remember are that the system must be deadheaded and the line from the load sensing valve must be released to tank to set the load sensing valve and blocked to set the pressure compensator. There should be hand valves located in your system to accomplish this. Worst case, you may need to isolate your pump as shown here, either on the machine or on a test bench prior to installing the pump. The portion inside the dotted lines represents the pump, its pressure compensator valve, and its load sensing valve. The small line coming from the spring represents the load sensing pilot line. The system should be deadheaded downstream of the relief valve with a gauge mounted to read pressure. With the compensator adjusted very high, the relief valve set very low, and all of the shutoff valves closed, the system relief valve can be set. Once the relief valve is set, adjust the pressure compensator. With the compensator set, open the shutoff valve B and set the load sensing valve. If you found this tip helpful, visit our website at gpmhydraulic.com and learn about our two-part training process.